Hi guys, how are we doing? Welcome back to another video. So I've just installed myself a lovely little safety relay and I thought, you know what, I'll give you a quick rundown of what I've done and how kind of safety relays work. So I've installed a few of these. These have been a bane of my life before on site and it's, it's a bit, if you don't understand them, it's a bit tricky, but essentially these are really smart devices, not really smart, but kind of smart relays that are used for e-stops or two-hand operations, that sort of stuff. So I've upgraded my e-stop because I had a bit of a cheapy one from that came with this push button station from Amazon or from China. So I've now got an iDeck e-stop, which is a bit chunkier and a lot more like, um, just a lot more oof to it. Um, yeah. So what I've done is I've upgraded, I've put, I've put a new e-stop there and I've wired it into the safety relay. So I'm just going to talk you through kind of how it works. I've got the data sheet here, so we can go through that a little bit as well. Um, I guess probably the best place to start is, and I've talking to a guy that I work with, um, like he's somewhat of a new graduate at work. The, I guess the, the most common conception or misconception of e-stops is that when you're hitting that, you're disconnecting power, but you're not like, you know, that LED is still on. You can see this LED is still on. At the back, I'm flashing. You don't really want to kill power, especially not to your control circuits. So yeah, you're killing power to um, maybe some circuits, so an output to a valve or to a, a motor or whatever you're going to. You know, generally this signal here, I want it to go into my system. So my e-stop, the status of my e-stop, it goes into uh, my relay and my PLC. So my safety relay and my safety PLC. So in that way, depending on the state of it. So you can see that I've got four LEDs. This relay is happy or safety relay is happy. I hit the e-stop, I've only got one. It's unhappy. Um, I reset it. I've got two LEDs, so it's ready. But until I press this, it's not actually yeah so we'll, we'll discuss this so first misconception is that you, you're not cutting power when you hit that e-stop so don't think that you are it's something that it this how it's how it used to be so if you imagine this is a control panel and you had a massive machine let's say you had to walk around the machine it was 100 meters around it you might have um five six seven eight e-stops all daisy chained one to one to one to one so previously it used to be power incoming and then e-stop 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 going out to your output devices so when they hit the e-stop they would be interrupting the power coming in the problem with that is that if you've got 7 8 10 12 15 100 e-stops daisy chained together and you hit e-stop number six or e-stop number 82 or whatever it is you have no idea you just lose power and you have no idea what e-stop's been pressed you'd have to go around and check all the e-stops but if the wires come off or the wires, you know, got a butt corroded or whatever, and it's no longer making a good connection, you're just going to have to debug hundreds of meters of wire. So what we do now is instead of having a bunch of e-stops in series, we wire, we bring them all back into our control system. So there's two ways of doing that. I'm using a safety relay because this safety relay is like 100 quid. I got it for like 30 quid on eBay. Um, you could use a safety PLC. So this PLC, it costs like 250 quid for a Siemens 1200. Um, but to get a safety one, it's like another 250 quid. So the safety PLC is almost double the price. So generally, I guess if you're, if you're trying to save them on cost, which you're not always trying to do, actually, if you're trying to save on cost and you don't have an ultra complex system. Sorry, let's just reset this. My thing's beeping away. It's annoying me. If you're trying to save on cost, you're probably going to go for a safety relay. Also, sometimes you just have so many outputs and so... Yeah, I mean to be fair, yeah, you always if you're saving on cost, you're gonna go with a safety relay. If you're if you've got money to spend and you got you got the budget, you're gonna go with a safety PLC. So this is a non-safe PLC, hence I'm using a safety relay. Um because it's cheaper. Cool. So essentially they both do the same thing. All you're doing is you bring so e stops you should know are two channel uh, devices or should be two channel devices, and you've got two normally closed channels coming into the control system. In this case, into my safety relay. So, I don't know if I can show you one of my channels here. Yeah, let's go. So I've got S12, S21, S22, A2. Uh, and then let's get you in the back there. Oh, focus. A1, S34, S33, S11. So one of my channels is coming in on S11 and S12. So that's one channel the e-stop. And then the other one is S21, S22. So now if I disconnect, let's just take out S12. So 
So just there now, it's de it detected a fault. So they, it's made connection again. So it says, okay, well, I'm good on uh, your your inputs are good again. But the output K1. So my first, maybe I should show you the schematic of this. But yeah, so inside this relay, I've got two. Inside the safety relay, I've got two relays, two contacts that are opening and closing. And so, doo -doo -doo, probably this is, yeah, so K1, which is this set of contacts, and K2, this set of contacts. Right now, K1 is not happy. So, all it, it's, this, these, these have opened because I lost that channel. So now, uh, if I take it out completely, I lose that LED as well. If I put that back in, it's it's gone okay i can see the e-stop again but i'm still not going to be happy with you so right now my e-stop isn't pressed that's the important thing to know and that's the great thing about these devices so my e-stop's not pressed right now but the safety relay detected a fault on the on the e-stop circuit so if that wire had broken it would have done the exact same thing so right now my plc system's gone okay i've lost the e-stop it's flashing red because I've got it flashing my red lamp output. And it's also that buzzer that you can hear. I've just got it blipping my buzzer on a little bit. Just because it'd get annoying if I just blaze the buzzer at full uh, volume. Uh, so it's blipping on for 40 milliseconds and then off again. So right now, this e-stop now, you can set this so that when it detects the input back again, it automatically resets. So some e-stops, some uh, e-stop safety, safety relays automatically reset. Some you need to... Uh, manually reset so i'm resetting my manually using here i can do this both ways if i just remove this button and essentially just short out the two contacts so mm, that's not resetting i'm interested okay yeah this is good so i'm pressing my restop reset button and it's not working because it's like well i've had a problem on that channel do you want to just hit the re hit the stop and reset it, reset it both so it's lost one channel and it's gone well, why did we lose one channel, not the other? What's going on there? So it's it's waiting now for me to reset it properly by hitting the e-stop, resetting it, then resetting it, and then it will go, okay, fine, I'll turn on my contact. So I hit the e-stop, I lose everything, reset it, I get my inputs back, then reset, boom. It's really nice, isn't it? <laughs> cool. So um, the schematic for these is pretty much the same across the board. The one thing to be to take note of is that not e-stops are the same. So this is a safety, um, sorry, not e-stops, not all e-stops are the same. Not all safety relays are the same. And actually they all vary very, very much. So be careful. I've got a Phoenix Contact one here. Uh, I've also got a Pills one here. So this Phoenix Contact one can be used in single channel mode or dual channel mode. And it can be used for e-stops or safety doors. This is a different e-stop, which is only used in dual channel mode. So you can't put one input in. So here, if my e-stop only had one signal, one normally closed signal, this relay would be fine, but this one wouldn't. So you, you need to know the, th the difference. Again, uh, this one as well is slightly more complicated in that it's a two channel monitoring, a two hand operation uh, monitoring safety relay. So be aware of that. Like you can't use this safety relay for this uh for an e-stop so like, you'd have to use it for two-hand operation which is basically when you normally you might have like a press and the operators put in something putting you know jeans in a press and he stamps it and so they have a cage around it and they don't want the operator to, be able to put their hand in the machine whilst he's operating it so you have two buttons so you press both buttons down you got to keep both you, you got to keep both your hands on both buttons and if you take one off then it will immediately cut the uh, cut the cut the power to the press and stop moving the press, which is what these sorts of things are for. Cool. Okay. So quick rundown of the schematic. So we've got power being supplied into the safety relay via A1, A2, which is doo -doo -doo, like one there, one there. So power comes in, 24 volts, and then you've got your logic, which is where you pass in your input. So this peels this safety relay can take in three inputs. I'm only using two, so it can take in S11, S12, which is one channel on my e-stop, and then S21, S22, which is the other channel, and then S33, S34. So you can see the explanation of that. Actually, okay, sorry. It can only take in two channels, and then S33 or S34 is the start circuit. So that's what my push button is connected to. My push button is wired to S33, S34. And then 
what so this is my control logic part of the safety relay and then i've got the outputs that i'm driving so in this instance uh i've got 13 connected to uh, i can't remember so 13 14 is basically going to a relay that i have to drive so an output so my fourth output of my plc goes to not fourth maybe fifth uh goes to a relay which i'll show you so not a safety relay a normal relay Go back this way, Ooh, knocking things over. So over here, you can see I've got an LED on there. If I hit the e-stop now, this uh, turns off that. Uh, this turns off that normal relay. So this is just a standard normal 24 volt coil relay, and I would use it to drive, for example, a motor. And so I've got my 24 volts coming from my mains distribution, my 24 volt. Uh, power distribution on the other end going into my safety relay so it goes 24 volts into here into 13 and then out from 14 is where i connect so for example let's say a motor or a valve i'll connect that there to there and then the other end ground it put it to zero volts and then now what that means is that whenever this um whenever the e-stop's unhappy so reset it then this relay has no power and it has no ability to drive um anything but once i once i reset the e-stop then it's a, it allows the uh the relay to fire again so right now i've got my output on my plc on if i hit the e-stop that's killing my uh, output there because it, it, my plc detected that uh, i don't have the e-stop but on top of that i just have no power to here anyway so if i put a meter on there onto that 24 volt which is normally connected to my power distribution it goes through my e-stop relay first so when you hit the e-stop or it loses a contact then these open up and hence no current flows uh cool i think that's about it um the one thing to be aware of the safety relay that i'm using doesn't have any monitoring which is quite nice actually but essentially the one I'm using at work does, and it's a bit of a pain because I want to, I want to play around a little bit, and I want to tap into this S11 S12 circuit. But uh, so this this one here doesn't have any monitoring. So what some e-stop relays do, this this e-stop relay is just looking for 24 volts. It goes okay S11 to S12. I've got a circuit loop there, and I've got 24 volts. Some of them will send out like a pulse width modulated, a square wave, a triangle wave. It will send out a certain modulated signal on S11 and expect to see it back on S12. And it knows how long it expects to see that back, etc. What type, what type of signal. So if you manipulate that signal in any way, it will then go, oh, well, I've got a problem. And then um, not work. So, yeah, some certain channels, or certain PLCs, certain safety relays, do have more fancy detections than others so just be aware of that cool all right i think that's a quick rundown of safety rated plcs and yeah i shall see you guys in the next one take care bye bye